Do you notice that your mood changes frequently throughout the day? Like maybe you start off your day in a good place, but despite nothing major happening to you, you end up experiencing these physiological waves of heightened anxiety, irritability, or maybe it's more depressive symptoms like a lack of motivation, exhaustion, or just feeling kind of meh. Maybe it's a mixture of all of the above. What we're going to discuss today is absolutely key to making sure that you're not only starting off your day feeling well, but that you maintain that equilibrium throughout it. And that, my friend, is your blood sugar. Hey, I'm Jess, I'm a clinical nutritionist, and today we're gonna to be talking all about blood sugar and how it's actually a huge cause of daily mood swings. So while there are of course many nutritional factors that may influence your mood that we discuss on this channel, blood sugar is foundational because it's not just about what you're eating, but also about how. So we're gonna cover three things in this video. One is how and why managing your blood sugar is gonna help you improve your mood. Two, I'm gonna give you a very simple way to assess what type of blood sugar dysregulation that you may be having. And three, if you stick around, I'm gonna give you my top most effective, yet also easiest nutritional hack that's gonna help you start balancing your blood sugar and stabilizing that mood. So let's get into it. Blood sugar or glucose is the primary source of energy for the body, including our brains. So when our blood sugar gets too high or too low, we can experience a range of physical as well as emotional symptoms. Low blood sugar has been associated with nervousness, anxiousness, worry, or a combination of emotions that can lead us into that hangry state, whereas high blood sugar can often cause fatigue, difficulty in concentrating, irritability, and even depression. This may be one of the reasons why that people with type 2 diabetes are two to three times more likely to suffer with depression. Though it's important to note that these states don't purely exist in a hyper or high hypoglycemic state, these emotions and symptoms can cross over quite a bit, especially when you just have generalized dysglycemia. Dysglycemia is a broad term that refers to an abnormality in blood sugar stability. While we're still investigating the various mechanisms of action through which blood sugar impacts our mood, there are a few well-known correlations, the first one being insulin and our stress hormones. Insulin is a hormone that helps our cells absorb glucose from the blood. When we eat a meal that is high or contains carbohydrates, our blood sugar levels rise, triggering the release of insulin. Insulin lowers the amount of glucose in your body by signaling the cells in the body to use glucose as fuel. Since the brain likes a constant supply of blood glucose, it will signal the adrenal glands to release two hormones called adrenaline and cortisol whenever blood glucose levels are low. This signaling mainly happens to initiate a process called glycogenolysis, which is the synthesis of glucose from stored glycogen in the body. Nevertheless, the release of these fight or flight hormones, cortisol and adrenaline, can often cause feelings of anxiety and irritability. Furthermore, if someone is insulin resistant, then essentially this feedback loop becomes compromised and we can continue pumping out these stress hormones even though we may already have enough glucose. Blood sugar or glucose also plays a role in the synthesis of serotonin. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter involved in regulating mood, appetite, and sleep, among other functions. When serotonin is at normal levels, you're more likely to feel more emotionally stable, happier, calmer, while low levels of serotonin are associated with feelings of depression. Serotonin is actually synthesized from the amino acid tryptophan, which converts to 5-HTP and then to serotonin. Insulin essentially increases the supply of tryptophan to the brain in multiple ways that are a little complex, but if you're interested in understanding those mechanisms of action in more detail, you can check out this study that not only dives deep into this, but looks at a lot of different ways where insulin may be involved in the pathogenesis of depression. 
Essentially, what you need to know or take away from this is that insulin resistance messes up and decreases serotonin synthesis. So if someone has dysglycemia, then their serotonin pathways are likely going to be off. Whew, was that enough science for you? You're like ready to move on? Okay. So let's talk about how to know what type of blood sugar dysregulation you may be experiencing. While you may have already gained some insight through the way in which we categorize certain emotional states earlier, the way that I gauge this with people that I work with is by through asking them how eating impacts their energy. For example, if eating gives you energy where you actually feel much better after you eat, then you're likely coming out of a hypoglycemic dip or experiencing reactive hypoglycemia. Whereas if you frequently feel more tired or have strong energy crashes after you eat, whether this is directly after or an hour to two hours later, then you're likely experiencing hyperglycemia or high blood sugar. These two different states can essentially bounce off of each other and essentially turn into like a blood sugar roller coaster where what goes up must eventually come down but often goes down lower than we would like and that leads to the vast fluctuations in moods that we have been discussing. If you have stable blood sugar, then eating really shouldn't impact your energy at all. While you may love roller coasters or even how sugar rushes make you feel for a moment, we really want our blood sugar to be stable and consistent and not really ever change much, kind of like the it's a small world ride. It may seem boring at first, but while you're on it, you just can't help but appreciate how beautiful, peaceful, and joyful it actually really is. Obviously, that's how I feel about that ride. Let me know what you think about the It's a Small World ride in the comments below. So now that we know how blood sugar may be impacting our emotional state, as well as a glimpse into what kind of dysregulation we might be having, I want to give you a nutritional strategy that's going to help you get off of this roller coaster. And no, it's not going on keto or cutting out all carbs. It's actually more about how you eat them. This strategy, as simple as it sounds, is to basically not eat carbohydrates by themselves. They don't want to be alone, they want to be with their protein and their fat friends. See, having carbohydrates with other macronutrients helps slow the release of sugar in the blood. So while an apple is an okay snack, an apple and some almond butter is an even better snack because the almond butter contains a little bit of protein in addition to fat. Having some chips or maybe even some carrot sticks, then let's have some guacamole with those. Basically, I want you to ask yourself every time you eat something, is there protein and or fat? In an ideal world, it would be great if we could have both, but at the end of the day, we really just wanna make sure that we're not eating carbohydrates by themselves. No naked carbohydrates. If you are in fact insulin resistant, then you're likely gonna need to take more action than this. So stay tuned for part two of this topic where I'm gonna discuss five very specific yet also incredibly easy to implement nutritional strategies that will start turning your blood sugar around in just seven days. So I'll see you in that one.